I was f***ing sick, okay? I walked outside for like five minutes without a hat since it's snowing, and I've lived in snowy places my whole life, and my immune system is nice. But when you so much as look at Mother Nature wrong, she claps back. Hard. But despite my lack of an upload on this, I swear, every YouTube livestream I went to, someone kept pestering me, wondering if I was gonna give my thoughts on this. But hey, at least they only made you wait a week, give or take a few days, instead of eight months for... Okay, Furukawa Shacho. I know you're still new to the whole direct thing and had nothing to do with this trailer, but what was any of this? Even that E3 trailer was better if only for the Wub Wubs. This last trailer is probably the weakest for any modern Fire Emblem because I see so many people giving analyses of things that take like five minutes to figure out and praise on the fans' ravenous desire for more info on this game or tries to make a shitty waifu list when we all know Jojo Thea is best girl. So with this video, I'm gonna do something different for once and explain why both Fates and Echoes had better trailers that were more exciting and how even the E3 trailer did a better job. I'll start by discussing the Fates trailers, which I might add, all came out in six months, which is two less than what we waited for this one Three Houses trailer. In the January 2015 Direct, Nintendo opened with the teaser for, at the time, the next Fire Emblem for 3DS, and it was a bold move. Even though Nintendo highlighted Three Houses as the focus of this recent February 2019 Direct, now nah, let's open with Mario Maker 2 and pat ourselves on the back for adding a basic ass feature we were too stupid to add in the Wii U version because fuck Wii U owners. But instead of talking about the past, let's talk about the past. The cinematic opens with armies waging war, flames rising as archers loose their arrows, this freaky looking monster puppet thing popping up out of nowhere and nothing makes sense. But eventually, the camera zooms out of a painting to show a mysterious blue hair dancer that many thought was the main lord of this game for a while. This was all in just one minute and it set the stage perfectly for the most important part of the teaser. We are shown gameplay, in a teaser mind you, where we see a spunky pink samurai looking girl fight an archer and right here, this right here, was the highlight. We take it for granted now, but back in 2015, this was mind blowing. The game transitioning perfectly from the map to combat was incredible. This was simply unprecedented in a 3D Fire Emblem game. In Awakening before the fighting, the game would cut to black and then combat would play out. However, in this flashy new Fire Emblem, we saw seamless immersive transitions with developed maps and then we saw it again. Hinoka moves in to attack this cavalier on a bridge and it flows wondrously. The dialogue stuff after that didn't matter much because it wasn't Japanese, but oh my goodness, they finally put Maze in Fire Emblem. It took them 14 games, but we were finally acknowledged as royalty. What came next was the infamous April 1st Direct, and it graced us with the Choose Your Path trailer. This trailer opens with the mysterious dancer from before singing singing dulcet Japanese tones as a ton of vague questions from Kingdom Hearts appear on screen. Then more of Fate's great music plays as an epic battle unfolds around a dark paladin and a lightning sword master. Then, two kingdoms are revealed, the peace-seeking Hoshido and the glory-seeking Nor. The music transitions again as all the royals appear on screen and all is made clear. You must choose. Is flat truly justice? Or do you choose Nor for tits? After the fact, Bill explains to the viewer the differences between the two kingdoms in greater detail. Say what you will about fates now, the views and ratios don't lie. This got Fire Emblem fans excited. Now, I would talk about the Fates trailer at E3, however, the damage was already done and people were thirsting for this game hard by this point. So I'm just gonna skip ahead to the Fire Emblem Direct, which graced us with the first Echoes trailer. We opened with two children talking about a fairy tale. To newer fans of the series like myself, we had no idea what was going on, but to veteran fans, they had their minds melt as the impossible became reality. The black sheep of Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem Gaiden, the most radically different FE to date, was getting a remake for 3DS. And it looked good. The graphics were improved from Faith, which were already an upgrade from Awakening, the art style was breathtaking, and the animations were sublime. The continent of Valentia was a welcome change from Fate's Landia, 
and what made this even more impressive was the turnaround time. The game was slated for a May release, meaning they somehow made this game in the time it took them to make Fates, which came out less than a year for Western fans. And this game looked like it had quality, it was something new, unique, dare I say, exotic. Echo set the bar so high for Fire Emblem trailers that whatever Fire Emblem game would come out for the Switch afterwards would have a tough act to follow. Alright, so Echoes came out, it was a good game, we skip ahead a year and some change to reach E3 2018, where we would finally hear about Fire Emblem Switch. And what did the 2018 trailer give us? Well, we did hear about the first delay for this game, which was worrying, and that worry turned into me proclaiming this game would be delayed upon learning of its absence at the September 2018 Direct. Seriously, why does no one listen to me when I'm right? Anyways, there wasn't a whole lot of content in that trailer, which is why I personally was not hyped for it, but we did hear Dubstep Emblem, and we saw a wave of arrows attack a boss from Nier Automata, and this mysterious waifu hold a random sword like her life depended on it, so I give it a pass. And now we come to the burning question on probably two people's minds. Why did the Three Houses trailer fail to live up to my personal hype? Well, let's break it down. We start with not Tiki wondering why we're here, and then we're given the lore of the war. I already fell asleep. Just take me to the waifu. The Listen, Fire Emblem, and nobody buys the games nice. for the stories. We to buy the them east. for the waifus. Where's the waifu? This may be overly cynical, but have you seen my channel? And there is definitely something lacking in this lore explanation. Let me compare Three Houses exposition to Echoes' exposition. In the south lies a region long held by a more than 1,000 year old dynasty, the Adrestian Empire. Beyond its borders, to the frigid north, is the home of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus. Do you see the difference? Okay, yes, one is in Japanese while another is in English, and yes, as non-Japanese speakers, we are naturally more interested in the language we can't understand. Play Despacito here, Alexa. But listen again, and pay attention to the music this time. A league of nobles that heeds no king nor emperor rules what is called the Leicester Alliance. Is the home of the Holy Kingdom of Fargus, ruled by the royal family and its knights. The narrator is not the only one telling a story, as the music is just as, if not more, important for establishing the tone. The music that plays for Echoes is bombastic and energetic, and sounds like the type of music you would want to play when telling the story of a clash between two gods. The music that plays in the Three Houses exposition sounds generic in my opinion, and enunciates the monotonous tone the speaker has. The Echo speaker has authority in his voice, and that draws you in and makes you want to listen. While the Three Houses speaker sounds like he's giving a history lesson, which transitions to... You are the hero the world needs. You start out as a mercenary, traveling with a group led by your father, Geralt, after an unexpected incident reveals an unknown power hidden within. Around that same time, you alone begin to see a mysterious girl named Sothis, who appears within your mind. What the fuck was the point of this? I don't know either, Donkey. The premise seems to be that we're some sort of fanfic OC fusion of every Fire Emblem character in Smash with special eyes that see dream lollies. Even the rhetoric used to explain what sounds like a major part of Byleth's character is pretty uninteresting. Maybe it has something to do with this purple haze? After that, it goes on to talk about the monastery and roll credits that tells us that Gryffindor, Ravenclaw, and Hufflepuff exist, and nothing about the three lords that lead these houses or the members in them. Then it talks about training and battling, and while the animations look nice in this game, there's so much information thrown at us with no explanation. Arts are back, but they don't use HP. Instead of classic level ups, there are now character levels, which are no longer a flat 100, professor levels, which I guess are weapon ranks, class levels, and 
battalion levels? I know, it will probably all make sense when I have the game, I'm sure, but no one is explaining any of this now. There's also the fact that, I guess, any unit can learn any skill as we see here, and we also see Edelgard having access to a ton of classes, which makes me think that the Noble class in this game is the equivalent of the Villager in Echoes, but again, I don't know since no one is explaining anything. And that's my big issue with this trailer, and the direct in general, as there was nothing interesting me as a JRPG fan outside of being a fan of the series. Think about it, if you've just picked up a Switch after Smash, what about this trailer would compel them to buy this game? You can't tell what the tone is, as it has a school setting with a church being involved and there are these three kingdoms that are not at war with each other, but you have to pick only one and do you see why this wouldn't interest non-fans? Even as a fan of the series, do you know what the tone of this game is? Aside from anime? We don't know anything about the main lords aside from their lineage and we have some subtle clues about their personalities but not much. Dimitri seems to be blonde Ephraim since he likes to fight from this passing shot. Claude has this haughty vibe which we don't know if it's obnoxious arrogance or confident swagger but it is the aura he gives off. As for Edelgard... For the love of Naga, I swear if she's Erica 2.0, I'm gonna crush someone's left testicle. But that's just the character stuff. Some people don't even know if this game will pull a fate and have three versions which I don't think is the case, but the fact that people are even asking this question tells us how little we truly know about this game. However, it is Fire Emblem, and people are eating it up regardless. Maybe I'm getting too old for this, but I can't even buy alcohol in America legally yet. So, comments says the arbiters of something, tell me why I'm wrong because literally no one I have talked to has agreed with me, and I can only imagine what the internet is going to say. Pray for me, my subs, as I have something to do. I don't know, fucking know, maybe play Smash Brothers. Young Link seems like a fun thing to do right now. Except Bluffin has no idea what the fuck he's talking about, but I'm gonna have to deal with him meeting him and acting like he has any clue as to what he's saying. Ugh. <sighs>